Welcome back, Smile Jammers. Our next guest is a lupus survivor and principal of Glenmuir High School, joining us via Zoom to tell us about her latest publication. Powered up and living out loud is Dr. Marcia Smalling. Good morning, Dr. Smalling. Good morning, Sakina, and good morning to the viewers. Oh, How are you? Wonderful to have you, and thank you. I'm fine. I hope you're doing well. I'm great and grateful. Thank you. Oh, I love that. Great and grateful. So, you decided to let us in a little bit into your wonderful life and you, after you got powered up and decided to live out loud. But tell us a little bit about the journey to getting to that point. When did you find out about your, your lupus diagnosis? All right. So thank you so much for having me. This means a lot to me because I'm getting the chance to speak about the journey so I can um, give some hope to those persons also living with lupus and other autoimmune illnesses. So I was diagnosed with lupus way back in 2003. A lot of persons thought it was something that happened a couple years ago. It's from 2003. I was actually studying at Northern Caribbean University doing my undergrad degree when I started to increase um, experience these uh, symptoms, the fatigue, the pain in the joints, the, the fever, and so on. And that's when I realized that something was wrong. And then when I started to lose the weight drastically, then I said, I need to check this out. Mm -hmm. And then after that diagnosis, how did that affect your life on a whole? You know, the truth is that, you know, it would have caused some delays and I'll just say some delays in terms of the trajectory that I was on in terms of achieving my goals and so on. But I was determined that I would not have allowed it to hold me back. And let me admit that it was difficult. I was studying and working simultaneously and was involved in almost everything. I was involved in JTA. I was involved with a girl's home, for example, just a number of things in the Kiwanis Cove, Santa Cruz. And so it would have slowed me down, as I said, but I was determined that I would fight this thing. I had an excellent medical team and a very strong support system of family, friends, and colleagues, and that helped me. And my strong faith in God also propelled me and gave me the assurance that God is before all things and through him, all things would hold together. And, you know, it's, it's just the power of the dream wow. that you decide that I will not be held back at all. Power of the dream. I like that. Um, being involved in so much, being so busy, and then having this diagnosis as a lupus survivor, why did you decide to pen the book? I think it is purpose. And my purpose is igniting hopes, dreams, and possibilities for all. And I am committed to ensuring that everything that I do is in alignment with that purpose. And I know that there are other lupus patients, other patients with other autoimmune illnesses and other chronic illnesses, sometimes feel a sense of despondency, wanting to give up. And I figured, boy, I would have battled this. And if I can be of any help, then I am going to put this in a book. At least it will, you know, spread to more persons. And I think that this will help to amplify the voices of those people and offer real ways in which they can fight it and not just live with lupus, but thrive despite of it. Mm. How important is the dream? You mentioned the power of the dream, but how important is the dream to someone who is living, surviving, thriving with lupus? Yes, that is real, the power of the dream. It energizes you to just keep on going. It keeps you focused. And uh, when you feel like you want to slow down, you want to give up. And uh, yes, sometimes I do feel like I, I, I don't want to do this, but the dream holds you accountable to that purpose that um, guides you, propels you to just live your passion and to be of help to other persons. So I always hold on to that dream. It is my guide. 
it is what holds me accountable, as I said before, and gives me the energy to keep on going, even when I feel like I don't want to. And for those persons who are living with this illness, will agree with me that in the mornings for me, especially, I never feel like I want to get out of bed. The fatigue is the worst in the mornings, but it's the dream that says, girl, get up and go. Get <laughs> up and fantastic. go. Yes. That's fantastic. And if you can do it, surviving all of this, then I mean, we must can try, right? <laughs> um, before we go, I know there is a part in the book where you said, I'm determined to overcome life's obstacles, despite the odds that have confronted me. Is there any other advice, any other piece of advice that we can give to someone who's not necessarily surviving with lupus, but anything else, anything else that might keep us down or prevent us from wanting to get out of bed in the morning? Absolutely. I, I say to persons all the time that it doesn't matter who we are, we're all faced with adversities. We all go through those valley moments. It is inevitable. And that is what the powered life is all about, acknowledging these adversities and cultivating that mindset that, listen, we are going to do this. We are not going to be hindered. And there are actually things that we can do to help us to get through those value moments. And as I say, transforming those value moments into moments of value and the sad stories into stories of success. And when I think about the consequences of giving up, they're far graver than what is required for you to just drive your dreams. So That's the right. option for me is always drive those dreams. At Keep least going. at the, there is light at the end of the tunnel yeah. and you can embrace your achievements and celebrate them. Fantastic. You can celebrate the, the fear and the failure and the disappointment. So it's easy for us to just use up that energy. In and a get positive powered way. up. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Dr. Marsha Smalling. She is the author and, of course, the principal of Glenn Muir. On the other side of the break, we're going to tell you how to re-energize your career, but in a digital economy. We'll soon come. <laughs>